we hit these things very hard because we're passionate about the word of God. We're passionate about truth and we're passionate about the gospel. And there is a movement within the church of the prosperity gospel and how we've perverted that word prosperity and tied it into blessing. While Michael was gone, I didn't want our pages to lay dormant, so I started posting some things. And let me just read one of the, well, it's the one that's got the most views. Um, And it says from John Piper, prosperity cannot be a proof of God's favor since it is what the devil promises to those who worship him. And of course, John Piper's referencing Matthew 4, 9, where, you know, if I'll give you everything, if you, right, we we're familiar. So you and I begin to talk and we're like, why did that one resonate? That one's, that's the one that resonated the most comments, the most likes, the most views, right? And you and I begin to talk about prosperity and blessings and where does the where do those things play in our relationship with the lord it's it's gotten so inside out you know we use words today and they tend to you know have a a a, a lifespan right you know as you age your different your different generations have certain words that you know yeah you know which, I, and, which by the way i'm finding out the older i get that those in their <laughs> teenage years i have no idea what they're saying to me anymore and i feel really old yeah and if and if you were to say a word like gnarly they'd go what is that, <laughs> what is that? i don't even what, how do you spell that yeah what is, is it right uh but but no but words words tend to they, they morph and they change you know over time yeah. and and the word blessing has done just that uh, in fact in, in in our society and in much of Christendom, we say very quickly, oh, God has blessed me this week. We had, and in many cases, we mean well, because we're excited to give the Lord glory and honor yeah. for something that may have happened. But it's interesting that we don't get on the same same YouTube channel or the same thing and say, God has blessed me. I just lost my husband. God has blessed me. Yeah, I just, yeah because yeah. that doesn't equate to blessing. So what is... Is that really a blessing or is it just us expressing it? What, what yeah, is a blessing? Yeah, what is a blessing? And, and I think one of the things, um, you know, Michael and myself, our goal really is to try our best to present the word of God and truth, yeah. right? And let that be a foundation that we all gravitate to and then grow from daily, right? And we hit these things very hard because we're passionate about the word of God. We're passionate about truth and we're passionate about the gospel. And there is a movement within the church of the prosperity gospel and how we've um, perverted um, that word prosperity and tied it into blessing. Yeah. More importantly, how we have taken material things and labeled them as a blessing. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And and I was referencing a post that I saw where somebody said, Hey, I had done well in business and they were given God glory, which was you know, on the service is good. And I think to your point, they mean well, but do we know how to do that? Because we just wake up and realize we're redeemed. Those of us that are saved, I'm redeemed. Yeah. And, and this is, this is the core of it, right? So, yeah. so what, what, what is a blessing? What does it mean when it says God has blessed me? What yeah. is, what, you know, what is it? When we use, when we look at scripture, there's kind of really three different types of blessing that we see. One is, uh, man to man, right? So, you know, Jacob blesses his sons. Um, you know, uh, you, you'll see individual blessings. Uh, Boaz in the story of Ruth, you'll see the yeah. conversation of blessing. You, there's there's man to man. Then there's then there's man to God. And, and we see this a lot with David, right? In the Psalms and we see it in Proverbs. That's the way where, he's writing is, sure. Yeah. Sure. And, and, he, and he's blessing. And uh, I, I come to First Chronicles chapter 29, where it says, so David blessed the Lord in the sight of the assembly. And David said, blessed are you, O God, of God of, of Israel, our, our father forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory. Right. That, that, that's man to God. Right. Yeah. That, 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 yeah, that's yeah, yeah. And th- then there's this this third one, which is really where we're focusing tonight, which is God to man. Yeah. OK. It's God to man. And, and and one of the early places we see this is, is Genesis, believe it or not, Genesis chapter one. It says, so God blessed them and yeah. God said to them, be fruitful, be multiply and fill the earth. Right. This is this is God to man. But what does it mean to have God bless us? Now, you say, OK, Michael, those were Old Testament. How about New Testament? There's two basically two Greek words that are used right in the New Testament. Two, sure. two of them. 
One, one is Makarios, and I, I'm, I don't know that I've got my Greek down right perfectly there. Um, uh, and the other one is spelled E-U-L-O-G-E-O. Um, Eulog, Eulogu, Eulogu. Uh, it's very, I, I don't pronounce it well. I apologize. But it, 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 that basically centers on like words we would say to others. Um, in fact, our, our word eulogy comes from that. Like we would give in a, in a funeral. That's, that's where true. it comes yeah, from. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, but but it's that Makarios one that really gets us because that's it carries the meaning of of like happiness and 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 the the results of the way we're living our life hmm. you know in commitment to the Lord. And what's interesting about either one of those is neither one of those had anything to really do with prosperity. Yeah. Now I went back and I said, okay, let's let's look at where the Lord used the word blessing when the Lord Jesus was here. And it seemed when I found it, I'm, the two areas I found it was in was I really looking at was 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 the Beatitudes in Luke, and then of course um, Matthew chapter five verses one through twelve, and and I'm looking at and listening to Jesus speak there, and I'm going, there is nothing in that list in either place. <laughs> there is nothing there that talks about my car, my house, my money, my wife, my retirement. Where did we get the concept that God's blessing is wealth? prosperity, financial security. Sure. Sure. Lord, teach us to pray. Give us this day. He said our daily bread. Yeah. Not give us this life, our 401k. Right. <laughs> so, so, so the question is, have we, are we chasing after God for his will? Give us this day, our daily bread. Or are we chasing after God? Because we have this perceived notion that he wants us, which is very odd. If you begin to look at it through this lens, are we chasing after God because he wants us to have everything this world can afford, which he calls us to not be of this world? So how and, – and the other point is if we look at material things of this world as a sign of God's favor in our life and prosperity and God's blessing on our life, how do we then wrap our mind around that there are atheists that are millionaires? Well – and and how do we wrap our mind around the fact that that someone who hasn't had food for a week and got food is incredibly blessed? If yeah, we how, were, how, how do we and we there, we see it all the time of Christians that are suffering. We go to church and we see single mothers that that suffer. So then it becomes well, maybe they they don't believe enough. Oh, so now we're in in a works based system. It begins to unravel in a way. Whole- Thing yes. comes apart. Yes. Look, in creation, in the garden, prior to the choice that Adam and Eve made, yes, yes. it was prosperous, beautiful, fruitful. That was the design. Eternal. That was the design. Yeah. Yeah. But when sin entered into it, and the Lord laid out very clearly the gospel in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, when sin entered into this, it blew the whole thing to bits. And God had to enter in yeah. with a sacrificial system and and through that process, create a way for us to be redeemed back to him. Sure. The blessing of God is his provision Amen. for our sin. Look, Amen. Uh, the, yeah. it's at the core. Is, and, and it's funny you bring that up because the, the first blessing, I was reading an article about Billy Graham and somebody asked him, obviously before he passed away, you know, hey, I see these teachings of prosperity, and he he clearly outlined that the blessings of God are spiritual. Yes, spiritual. Yes. You know what his first one was? No. Forgiveness. Huh? Forgiveness. <laughs> Redemption. Forgiveness. Yeah. Just let's just go to Jesus's words in Matthew chapter five, and I'll and I'll summarize just very quickly verses uh, one through twelve. When Jesus saw the crowds, and, and I want you to picture the scenario. And when Jesus saw the crowds, he he went up to the mountain, and after that, he sat down, and the disciples came to him. Right? Why yeah. are these people coming to him? They've heard about him. There's been things yeah. happening. Right? There's miracles. Yeah. I mean, excitement and the buzz. Yeah. And are these people being that are being healed? Is that a blessing in their life? Well. Yes, of, of course, of course it is. And as all these people are coming, he opens his mouth and he begins teaching in verse two, saying, "Blessed are the poor in spirit, hmm. for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart." 
for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who have who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you <laughs> when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be, and be glad. glad. Amen. For your reward is in heaven, and it's great. The same way they persecuted the prophets yeah. who were before you. I'm sorry. Did I see a 401k in that list or a new car or a beautiful new house? No, I, I didn't see any of that. Is there anything wrong with having – we've touched on this so many times. No, there's nothing wrong with, with working hard with your hands. In fact, the Lord commands us to do so. Whatever yeah. your hands, whatever you find to do, do yeah. it with everything you've got, all of your strength. But for whose purpose? Right. Not it, for yours. Yeah, for whose purpose. And then more – not more importantly, but just as important how we identify that. Because I, it really, it really um, is a burden of mine because – we have the ex expectation of God that so-and-so is driving this, and I'd like to drive that. So-and-so makes X amount of dollars. We are setting up people to have a disappointment in God that is not God's, dis not God's place. No. It's not. It's about surrendering and saying, what is your will for my life? I, I, I've said it ad nauseum. Some of us go and do teaching. Some of us go and do CEO work. Some of us go and do surgery. There's all different levels. And because of that, there comes a salary. But that is not indicative of God's favor on your life. Doing what he's called you to do and living in his will, give us this day our daily bread. Yes. Walking through that daily, that is the favor and the blessing of God when you can do that. Well, and there's no question that 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 the Bible's also clear that who he loves he chastens. Okay. And so there sure. can be there can be a time of where, where where the Lord is allowing things in your life to get your attention. No questions asked. Absolutely. Uh and, and in the old testament, we, we see a cause and effect, right? With Israel, it says, if you will do this, I will do this. I will do this. Yeah. It's a, yeah. Do this. I'm yeah. going to do this, right, right? right? Well, and that we don't have that in the new covenant. We don't have the, the yeah. Lord paid the price for all of us. And the yeah, ultimate man. blessing is in fact, that payment, the very yeah, idea, the, the redemption. Yeah. The very idea and, and, and arrogance of the thought that I deserve and am entitled to this because Christ quote unquote, from their perspective, yeah. paid it all. Therefore I deserve an, I, I, I can't even, he did not pay it all for the sake of this world and material things. He Thank paid you. it all for your redemption, and that is it. Why would he want to redeem anything that's going to pass away? You know, that, that I, I sent you a quote this morning. I, I forget exactly how, how I worded it, but but it, that we're doing. But we, we talked about why would you spend anything? Why would you put any value? How did I don't forget how I even said it, but something to the effect of yeah. So until we realize the value of anything is only measured by its value in eternity, we invest our time and resources for a negative return. Exactly right. The only measure of anything is again is it's in a, in its eternal value, right? Not in yeah. an earthly value. Amen. There is the only way we can measure anything in eternal value. And if we measure something in eternity and, and it has no value at all, then we have to decide how much time and effort we want to put into it. Fair enough. Go go back to, to Luke chapter 6. Jesus does this again in the Beatitudes. And I and I love starting in verse 17 with this because it's, it's again, so clear why some are there. And Jesus came down with them and they stood on a level place and there was a huge crowd uh, 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 of, of disciples and, and, and a great throng of people great throng i mean there's a this it's a crowd yeah, right, right. Uh, uh, all, all judea and jerusalem and the coastal regions of tyre and sidon who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were were, were being cured yeah. and all the people were trying to touch him for power was coming from him and healing them all. And as this is going on, imagine this <laughs> massive healing. I mean, a true, a healing true service. healing service. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The real deal. Yeah. Right. I yeah. mean, these people are being healed and delivered yes. and it's going on in real time. And then all of a sudden, and amidst all of this, yeah, 
Now watch this. All these people, are, is this a blessing in their lives? Of course it is. They're sure. being healed. They're being delivered. Yes, in that sense. But amidst all of this, the Lord says to his disciples, I want you to pay attention to what's important. This is so great. And turning his gaze towards his disciples, mm-hmm. right? He looks towards them. Because you can see they're getting, I mean, you can just imagine. The Bible doesn't tell yeah. us this. Yeah. But this, this is incredible what's happening. Wow. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine being in that kind of a service where it's authentic and true and you see this? You'd probably be losing your mind. It's, a, it's incredible, right? Yes, and go get your friends. Go get so-and-so. Yes, you got to get here. And he grabs their attention, almost as if you would you would cup your precious wife's yes. face in your hands and look yeah. in her eyes and say, baby, I need you to listen to me for just a minute. Right. Like, I, 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 I need you here, like you and I, right here. Right, right, right I, here. Exactly. Right. And he yeah. turns to his disciples. And, and, and I'm just, the Bible doesn't give us this dynamic, but it just seems this way as you read the text. And turning towards his disciples, he began to say, blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who hunger now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you and ostracize you, and insult you, and scorn your name as evil for the sake of the Son of Man. Be glad in the day, and leap for joy. joy. Stop. Not not because you've got money, or your job, or you got a bonus, or your house got paid off. Yeah, read the next line of why you should jump for joy. (laughs) For behold, your reward is great in heaven. And that's why you should uh, leap for joy. There it is. For in the same way, their fathers used to treat the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you are receiving your comfort in full. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you shall be hungry. Mm. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all men speak well of you. For their fathers used to treat the false prophets in the same way. Yeah. Again, absolutely nothing wrong with experiencing and reaping the fruit of the success of your efforts, providing for your family. Yeah. You know, Jen and I just got back from the most amazing vacation. I I don't I've never been on such a such a trip and Jen, of course, is just the most amazing woman on the planet, but she created this amazing environment for us. And it was absolutely fantastic. We, we had just the greatest time and our pictures are just so much fun uh, to look back on in the remembrance. And we drew together so closely as a result of that in the moments of it, but it wasn't, it wasn't that we, that we went to this elaborate place or did, but the time together, it's the moments the man. Was, was all the moments were so amazing. The there were so many great moments with our, with our grandson and, 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 and well, both of our grandkids and, 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 you know, apparently my future son-in-law. Yeah. I've got that worked out. <laughs> well, I, I got, I'm praying for Connor and Charlotte Rose. We got that yes. going. Yes. Just, don't send us emails, please. Just, just smile. We're, we're, anyway, just smile. Just smile. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, it was being together and it was experiencing life together. Amen. That was the celebration and the joy. Amen. And, and you know, yeah. we had just as much fun on the trip as we did when we got back here to the house. Sure. And, and it, blessing is about relationship. And I think it's amazing yeah. that in the middle, in the middle of all of this unbelievable stuff, Stuff, and I'm not degrading it as stuff. These incredible miracles that that the living God of all creation was doing yeah. for these people. He takes a moment, right? He looks, looks at his disciples and says, now just, gentlemen, be careful. Heads up. Yeah. And somehow we have lost that, Justin. Yeah. We have turned the, the idea of the blessing of God yeah. into financial into prosperity, into, into power, into authority, into yep. influence. We have definitely perverted. Yeah. The blessing of God is yeah, our we, eternal security because amen. Jesus Christ took our sins on himself on the cross, died. Amen. Buried, resurrected. 
And, and this is why we talk about coming not just to the cross and laying our burden down and going getting more, but going through the cross to the point where we literally go through it, dying to ourselves, and then being resurrected on the other side of that, not as ourselves, but as Christ living in us. Amen. I, 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 we are way out of line, way out of line, turning God's blessing into a number. Yeah, absolutely. We we definitely perverted um, the idea of, of favor and blessing and prosperity. And we perverted it at our gain only. We perverted it for our gain and what we want and what we desire. And the takeaway for me, and I would encourage anyone that's listening to this, is each day, are you seeking God for what you can get out of it? Or are you seeking God for his will for every moment that particular day? Amen and amen. Romans chapter 4, verses mm -hmm. 6 through 8. Just as David also speaks of the blessing on the man whom God credits righteousness apart from works, blessed are those whose lawless deeds have been forgiven and whose sins have been covered. Blessed Amen. is the man whose sin the Lord will not take Amen. into account. And my friend, that's the definition of blessing. Amen. Won't you praise that, friend? Father, thank you for your blessing. Thank you, Jesus. That being Calvary. And that being redemption. resurrection, that being redemption, that being reconciled to you, that being the reality that no matter what this world brings in the seasons of prosperity, in the seasons of poverty, in the, in the seasons of, of, of every kind of difficulty, because we live in a broken and a busted world, we have the promise yeah. on the other side. And yes, Father, you can heal us. You can restore us. And you often Jesus. do in this life for your purpose. But Lord, you, you will always heal and restore us Amen. on your side. Amen. When we pass from death into true life with you. Father, change our hearts. Help us to get our minds and forgive us for having our minds so fixed on this world and it's Amen. junk. Father, set our minds and our hearts on you, Amen. that our passion will truly be Amen. you. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.